Yeah. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. Waalaikumsalam doctor. Okay, so today we will continue on lecture um, tutorial 12 regarding the compensator. And if we finish this earlier, then we will continue on lecture number 5B on PID controller. Okay, so uh, last week we have discussed about um, some of the tutorial question, tutorial question number one and number three. So today we, are, we will go to question number two and question number four. Okay, so let's look at question number two first. So unity feedback system with the forward transfer function GS equals K over S, S plus seven. And this system is operating with a closed loop step response that has 15% overshoot. Okay, so evaluate the steady state error under unit RAM input and then design a lag compensator to improve the steady state error by 20% at uh, 20 factor and evaluate how much improvement in steady state error after adding the compensator. Okay, so as I told you last week, uh, for question related to compensator, we will give you the dominant pole okay so in this tutorial uh there are no dominant poles given so uh we will use uh, matlab okay to obtain the dominant pole but in exam the dominant pole will be given to you okay so from matlab uh at 15 percent overshoot uh from matlab uh we cannot get it um uh, quite exactly at 15 percent so the, the closest uh, percent overshoot that we can obtain from MATLAB or if you, uh, if you use a better software or maybe a better way in MATLAB, you can probably get 15% overshoot. But for the sake of uh, showing example, we take a, a different percent overshoot value. Okay. So from MATLAB, I got uh, percent overshoot of 6.9 percent okay so this is the best uh, percent overshoot that I can get so at this uh, overshoot uh, the dominant pole is um, negative 3.5 plus plus 1.5 1 J and then the gain, so gain K is 14.5. Uh, okay, so in exam, these values will be given to you. So don't worry about how to get this. And uh, the first question asks you to evaluate the steady state error under unit RAM input. Okay, so we go back to our lecture on steady state error. So to get a steady state error for unit step in, uh, unit RAM input, first we need to calculate uh, KV, okay, or the static error constant KV under RAM input. So KV equals uh, the limit when S approaching zero for S times GS. Okay, so uh, let's uh, find KV. Okay, so we can cancel this. And the K is uh, at 6.9% is 14.5. So just substitute the values, okay. So we get so we get two point zero seven one. Okay, so that's the static error constant. So the question asks you to find steady state error. So steady state error. 
So for uh, KV, the steady state error formula is this one, 1 over KV. So 1 over KV. So we get zero point four eight two nine. Okay, so this is uh, answer for sta steady state error under unit ram input. And then question B design a light compensator to improve the steady state error by 20 factor. So basically we want to design a compensator that has this uh, transfer function. Okay, so as I said last week, we cannot find this K because um, uh, the calculation is quite difficult to do it manually. So for the sake of example, we only find uh, ZC and PC. Okay, so the steady state error uh, is reduced by 20 factor. So the steady state error new is um, steady state error all divided by 20. Okay, so the new system should have a steady state error of about 0 0.024, okay, 2415. So to get the value of uh, ZC and PC, we use the um, uh, ratio concept, okay. We need to find KV new over KV original. Or we can just use uh, error steady state error new over steady state error original which is 20 okay so the difference between this and um the example in the slide so in slide uh the example given in the slide is we find the uh, static error constant under unit step input. So for unit step input, the formula for uh, the steady state error is 1 over 1 plus kt, okay, 1 plus. So you cannot, um, you cannot use uh, the ratio straight away to find uh, ZC and PC. But for uh, unit RAM input, the steady state error is just uh, 1 over kv. Okay, so uh, what I want to show here is that if we find uh, kv new over kv, so it should be 1 over e new over 1 over e. So rearrange, you get uh, e new over e. Okay, It's um, proportional, yeah? the relationship between kv and uh, e. So you don't have to uh, KV, okay? you don't have to find KV, just straight away use 20 as the ratio to find PC over ZC, that should be fine. But for KP, uh, because of one plus here, then you need to use, uh, you need to find new KP. Okay, so uh, the ratio uh, ZC, over PC is uh, 20. Okay, so to design a compensator, uh, a lag compensator, uh, lag and number there. Okay, so to design a lag compensator, we choose uh, value of PC such that it is um, 
uh, bigger okay bigger than zc or uh, less uh, negative than pc uh, than zc okay so we choose uh, pc maybe somewhere close to zero or we choose uh, equals uh, 0 0.01 so when pc equals 0 0.01 then zc is uh, 0 0.2 Okay, so we get our PC and ZC. So the uh, compensator trans function is uh, the K compensator times S plus uh, 0 0.2 over uh, S plus 0 0.01. Okay, so to find KC, uh, to do it man manually is uh, quite troublesome. Okay, so we don't do this manually. And then similar to question C here, as evaluate how much improvement in steady state error after adding the compensator. So what you need to do here is basically you can uh, plot in MATLAB. Okay, you plot in MATLAB and uh, plot the root lockers and then find the steady state error at the new, uh, at the same overshoot, okay, zero, uh, 6.9 percent by adding the compensator. So to do this manually. Uh, again, it's, uh, I think, uh, tak, tak senang kot. Uh, maybe you can try. So, um, so steady state error. Um, So steady state error is uh, one over uh, limit s approaching zero, s times gs. So when we add compensator, then gs becomes gc. Okay. So uh, the when when the system has no compensator then this is equals one okay there is no compensator but now there is a compensator then gc and g will be in cascade okay so you can find the error or maybe we can find uh the bottom part here first so limit s approaching zero for s times gs so we get uh, KC So cancel this. So we get uh, some values, but we don't have KV, KC and K. So pointless yeah, to cari uh, steady state error. So again, uh, you can use MATLAB. Okay. Okay. So basically, for lag compensator, we can find the uh, PC uh, ZC and PC using uh, some ratio using this ratio. KV uh, KP new over KP or KV new over KV. But first, you need to find the uh, steady state error value, okay, at uh, whatever percent of a shoot given. But most of the time, uh, we cannot find the final uh, gain value because the calculation is uh, impractical to do uh, manually, okay. Okay, so. Uh, that's it for lag compensator. So one more thing about lag compensator is uh, this thing, okay? ZC uh, less than PC. Okay, now let's look at uh, question number four for lead compensator. So unity feedback system with forward trans function 
GS equals K over S plus S, S times S plus seven. So the system is operating with closed loop step response at uh, 15% this step response you got whatever at 15% evaluate the settling time okay so again uh, if we want to find the dominant pole at 15% overshoot you need to do some uh, calculation but uh, in exam we will give you the dominant pole value so here at 6.9% similar to previous question so the dominant pole is Dominant pole. Negative 3.5 plus 1.51. Okay, so uh, we go back to uh, lecture note. So first we can find the damping ratio. Okay, so the damping ratio is given by uh, negative lawn uh, percent overshoot over 100 divided by square root of pi square plus uh, lawn uh, percent overshoot over 100 square. Okay, so we can use calculator for this. So we get the damping ratio as uh, 0 0.6481. So check my lab ready. Line value there. Okay, apa pula? Okay, so after you get uh, after you get the damping ratio, then we can find the uh, the value of um, natural frequency from this figure here. So negative three point five, this one is equals uh, negative uh, damping ratio times natural frequency. So negative three point five equals. So we can get uh, natural frequency So natural frequency is about 5.4 Okay and then from here we can find the uh, evaluate the settling time. Okay, so we can find the settling time. So settling time is four over uh, damping ratio uh, times omega n. Okay, so this will be. 
1.143. So we get the settling time. Okay, so this is uh, answer for question A. So the step that you need to do is find the uh, damping ratio from percent overshoot and then uh, find the settling time from the dominant pole. Okay, now question B. Design a lead compensator to improve the settling time by three times. And then choose ZC equals negative 10. Okay, so uh, the new settling time is um, the original TS improved by three times. Okay, so meaning that the settling time from the original one is reduced by three times to get the new settling time. So we get the new settling time at 0 0.381. And uh, we maintain the same uh, percent overshoot at 6.9%. So our uh, damping ratio is also the same, which is 0 0.6418. So use this to get the natural frequency, so Ts nu equals 4 over uh, damping ratio over uh, natural frequency nu. So natural frequency nu equals So you get 1.62. And then from here, we can find the new dominant pole. New dominant pole is negative uh, damping ratio times omega n plus um, omega n times square root of 1 minus damping ratio squared j okay so calculate Okay, so this is the new dominant pole. Then we can uh, sketch in S plane. So the new dominant pole is uh, somewhere here. And then uh, the pole from GS. And then the compensator uh, zero. The sun is at C. So maybe we change ZC. Okay, 
uh, let's say ZC is uh, here negative one, okay? Yeah, uh, ni contoh je, okay? And then we want to find PC, so maybe PC is here. So we use the concept of angle. So the total angle uh, at this point should be equal uh, 180 degree. So let's find the angle. So theta one equals um, 180 minus tangent minus one one point two three four over one point zero five. So 130 degree point three nine and then theta two uh, 180 minus tangent minus one one point two three four over uh, this line. Okay, so one point zero five minus one. So about 92.32 degree. And then theta 3. So theta 3. Uh, this length. Uh, tangent minus 1. 1.234 over uh, this length here. So 7 minus 1.05. Eleven point seven two degree. So we can find the total angle uh, to be uh, equals hundred eighty degree. So theta one, uh, sorry theta two, minus theta one, plus theta three, plus theta PC equals hundred eighty. And then from here. Uh, ninety two point three two minus hundred thirty point three nine um plus eleven point seven two plus theta PC equals hundred eighty. So find theta PC. Kira benda ni mesti something wrong. Okay, so theta PC is uh, negative 229.79 uh, degree. So negative uh, Okay, salah lah. Okay, apa-apa je lah. So uh, take positive. T 
Okay. Okay, Sa- tak tahu mana salah. Um, so let's say we get a PC, Tita PC. And then we can find the value of a PC, okay, from uh, from the Tita PC. So the value of a PC should be um, uh, this angle. So uh, Tita 4 is about um, tangent minus 1, 1.234 over uh, this line. Okay, so PC minus 1.05. So calculation saya salah, saya akui. So let's say uh, uh, ni uh, salah. Okay. So let's say PC is negative 10, for example. Okay, for the sake of uh, showing you calculation. But um, uh, you can try it later. And uh, I think you can also refer to past year question. Okay, I think last semester punya question. Uh, for similar kind of calculation. So let's say PC is negative 10. So now we can, uh, we need to find the gain at the, uh, at the new dominant pole. So to find the gain, we need to find uh, the length. So length one, length two, length three, and length four. So after we find the length, then we uh, multiply all of them. So let's try find the length. So L1 is uh, this length. So square root of 1.234 square plus 1.05. Okay, so you use uh, Pythagoras theorem. Okay. So we get 1.62 and then L2 so this length So you get 1.235 and then L3. So square root of 1.234 squared plus uh, this length. So 7 minus 1.05. So about 6.077 and then lastly L4. Uh, this line. Okay, so PC just now we assume 10. So 10 minus 1.05. So uh, L4 is 9.035. Then we can find um, the gain. So gain K equals 1 over M. And then M equals the product of length 0 divided by product of length of poles. So length of the 0 is only L2, okay? So because L2 measured from the 0 here. So we get, uh, from here we get L2 divided by L1 times L3 times L4. So 
So it's about 0 0.0139. And then K, the gain K is 1 over. So it's about 71.94. Okay, so here we get the gain for the compensator. So we can rewrite the compensator transfer function. So K is 71.94 times S plus uh, ZC equals 1. And then S plus 10. Okay, so this is the uh, compensator transfer function. Okay, so uh, from the example, uh, from the tutorial, it's obvious that a uh, question about lead compensator has more calculation. Okay, uh, so maknanya keluar final lah. Sebab lagi susah nak kira berbanding lead compensator. Okay, so for lead compensator, first you need to find um, the uh, new dominant pole from uh, the settling time. Okay, so lead compensator improves the settling time. So find the new dominant pole. So usually the original dominant pole will be given to you. And then after you find the do new dominant pole, then you can find the um, compensator pole. Okay, so the compensator pole, usually one of the value is given either compensator pole or compensator zero. So let's see if you are given compensator zero, then you can find compensator pole using angle. So angle, find all the angles equals 180. And then uh, when you find angle, then you need to find the gain. So to find the gain, you need to use length. Find all the length and then using uh, K equals 1 over M. And then M is product of length of 0 divided by product of length of poles. Then you can find K. So after you find K, ZC and PC, so ZC is given. Then you can rewrite the transfer function for compensator. So in this case, compensator transfer function equals K times S plus ZC over S plus PC. So you need to rewrite in this form. Okay, so that's all for compensator. So if you have any question, uh, you can uh, ask me later. Okay. So let's continue with uh, our lecture on PID. Okay, so this is our last lecture, but we still have tutorial, so maybe uh, we will finish our tutorial by this Wednesday, okay? So uh, lecture 5B is about PID controller. So in this uh, topic, you will be able to understand the purpose of uh, P, PI, and PD, and also PID controllers. So what are they? Later we will see. And then uh, we will apply tuning rules in designing a PID controller using Ziegler-Nicole's method. So uh, let's uh, go and uh, let me introduce to you what is PID controller. So uh, the variable being controlled, so in this case, uh, the variable U that is uh, going into the plan is actually the output of the controller. Okay, so uh, the output of the controller will become input of the plan. So the output of the controller will change in response to a change in measurement or set point or error. Okay? So uh, this is uh, one of the basic uh, closed loop transfer function or closed loop block diagram, a unity feedback. So we have an output here, output Y. 
So we have some measurement of the output and then the measurement will be uh, fed back to the uh, summing junction. And then here at the summing junction, um, the error is calculated. So the error is cal calculated by comparing the value of uh, output uh, minus the value of input. Okay, so if it's too big, then uh, the controller will receive a positive value. If it's negative uh, too, too low, then controller will receive a negative value. So the controller will do some adjustment and the new adjustment value will be given to the plan. Okay? And the plan will produce uh, another output. So uh, in the controller here, so from uh, lecture 5A, we have seen a uh, compensator. So compensator is basically uh, similar to controller, but it only has either uh, integral uh, compensator or uh, lag compensator. And we have also have a derivative compensator or lead compensator. But for PID controller, we basically combine all of uh, integral and, ID, uh, and derivative controller. So we have P or we call it proportional and I, we call it integral and D, derivative. So we have proportional gain or proportion controller, integral controller and derivative controller uh, combined or sum together, okay? Uh, ditambah kat sini. So basically the controller here, inside the controller has three more boxes or three more blocks that are uh, sum, okay? Sum at sum injunction. So the formula or the uh, transfer function for controller or PID control is given by this CS equals KP. KP is the proportional gain plus KI over S. So KI is integral gain plus KD times S. So KD is derivative gain. So we can simplify this. We get this KD S squared plus KPS plus KI over S. So before we can go into looking at what is the effect of having PID controller, let's uh, go back to some variables in a uh, time response that we did, uh, we we can choose to uh, reduce or to improve. So here is the overshoot. So usually we maintain overshoot values. Okay, so overshoot, and this is undershoot. So most of the, of the time, we don't care about this undershoot. We only care about this overshoot. And we have rise time here. So rise time is the time taken for the system to reach the steady state value the first time okay, before overshoot. And then we also have settling time. So settling time is when uh, the uh, time uh, response actually reach about 2% uh, margin, okay? And we also have steady state error. So steady state error is the value of uh, the difference between the steady state of the time response compared to the actual uh, value or actual steady state value. So we have uh, four things here. So we have rise time, overshoot, setting time, and steady state error. So undershoot is usually we don't uh, use uh, undershoot for designing a controller. So ideally, uh, we want to get this black line here. We want to we want to design the system to achieve this black line, uh, which means that it has zero rise time, zero overshoot, and zero steady state error. So this is ideally, so definitely not. Uh, occurring in real life. So in real life, you can either get uh, the dotted line. Okay? So the first dotted line here, you might get a very big overshoot, small rise time, but very big overshoot. Or you can get another dotted line here, a very, very slow rise time, but no overshoot and probably no steady state error as well. So you can uh, get either two of these uh, dotted line. So the best uh, time response that you can get is the red line here. 
So the red line here, you have uh, no overshoot, no steady state error, and you might have a bit of rise time. Okay, so rise time is probably about here. So this is the best because you don't have overshoot and you don't have steady state error, and you cannot get the black line here. It's uh almost impossible. Okay, no, tak boleh dapat. So let's say uh, let's look at an example of how we can um, design a controller back to basic. Okay, so back to lecture number two, I think we have seen about uh, deriving the transfer function from a mechanical system, translational mechanical system. So this is a box connected with damper and spring, and there's an input force. You can derive the equation of motion. And you can convert the equation of motion using uh, Laplace transform into frequency response. And then you substitute some values for the mass, the damper, the spring, the force. And you get the transfer function. So transfer function is uh, output over input. So here is an example of transfer function of a plant. Okay. So this is your plant. So GS here. So the goal of this problem is to show the effect of adding a PID controller. So let's say you add a controller here so that you can improve the performance of GS. So let's say if you have no controller at all, meaning that you don't have any of this thing, you only have GS. So if you plot the time response, then you will see that the final value of the output is about 0 0.05. So the error is very large, it's about 95%. So actually you, uh, the uh, the final steady state error is supposed to be one, okay? equals one. But from this uh, GS, if you plot uh, the time response, you will get the final steady state value is about 0 0.05. So the steady state error is very large, 95%. And the settling time is about 1.5%. Okay, so the settling time is the time when uh, the system reach steady state. So takkan kita nak uh, biar je system ni have a very large error. So we don't want this. We want to reduce this error. So to reduce the error, maybe we can uh, add a proportional controller or just adding again KP. So by adding a gain KP, so we can find the um, uh, final trans function or closed loop trans function. And then let's say we use KP equals 300 and then plot the time response. So from this figure, from this graph, we can see that the rise time and the steady state error has reduced. So just now the steady state error is about 95%. Okay? or 0 0.05 kat sini, very low. But now we have improved the steady state error. Okay, maybe about, um, now about um, 90, 90%, 90%, okay. And then uh, we, however, when we add proportional controller, we have an overshoot here, other overshoot. So we introduce an overshoot to the system and we also decrease a settling time by very small amount. So here we can see that by adding proportional controller, you can improve the steady state error, but you still have steady state error. You don't uh, eliminate the steady state error, but you introduce overshoot to the system. So the effect of proportional controller is you reduce the rise time, but you increase the overshoot and reduce the steady state error. So if you increase uh, K, uh, the steady state error will uh, reduce, but more overshoot. Okay, you will see more overshoot compared to K uh, equals 100, a smaller value of K. And now we add another controller. So instead of adding only KP, we add KD times S, or we call it derivative controller. So now we have two types of gain. We have KP and also KD. So we 
uh, adjust um, the value such that the time response uh, is the best that we want. Okay. So from here, we can see that the overshoot is reduced okay, compared to previous one. And the settling time also reduced quite a lot, okay, about 0 0.5 here. From just now, it's about 1. Okay, Now it's become 0 0.5. But adding KD only gives a small effect on improvement towards steady state error and rise time. So if you add KD, and increase the gain of KD, you will reduce overshoot, you will reduce overshoot, and also reduce the settling time, but you won't reduce the steady state error, and also improve the rise time, okay? You only reduce the overshoot. And now we uh, replace KD by adding KI of S, or an integral controller, and we adjust the uh, gain, so here we can see that by adding integral controller, it actually reduced the rise time, but uh, increase some overshoot, okay? introduce some overshoot. And uh, the above response show that the integral controller actually eliminates the error. Okay? So now you can see that the steady state error is about uh, zero. Okay? Now the graph actually equals one. But the rise time uh, meningkat, okay? So by adding uh, integral controller, you actually decrease the rise time or uh, make the rise time uh, even worse lah, or increase the overshoot and increase the settling time. But you improve or eliminate the steady state error. So if you use KD, you get a different effect. If you use KI, you get a different effect. So uh, one of the effect that you want is probably only observable in KD and some of it is observable in KI. So we can combine all of this together to get the best uh, time response that we want. Okay. So that's why we use PID controller. Basically, we use all of them, KP, KD, and KI. And we adjust the values according to some rules. So from here, we can see that uh, the system has no overshoot. So the no overshoot is the effect of KD. And the rise time is faster. Now the rise time is very, very fast. And the steady state error is uh, eliminated, okay? almost zero. So you need to use all of them to get a PID controller. But in some cases, you might choose only to use PD or PI or only P controller, depending on your application. Okay, so this is uh, this graph shows comparison between P, PD, PI, and PID controller. So you can see that if you add only P controller, you improve the steady state error, but you introduce overshoot. If you use PD controller, you still have steady state error but uh, the overshoot is reduced. For PI controller, the, steady, uh, the overshoot is there, still there, but uh, the steady state error is completely eliminated. If you use all of them together, you will see that there is no overshoot. You will get a faster rise time and no steady state error. Okay, so this table summarizes the effect of each of the controller. Okay, so KP basically uh, causes uh, overshoot. If you use more KP value, then more overshoot will be observed. But the steady state error is reduced but never eliminated. And then if you use KI, you will see that uh, if you increase the value of KI, you will increase the overshoot, increase the settling time, but the set uh, the steady state error is completely gone. Okay, no steady state error. And if you use KD derivative controller, you will see that the overshoot is decreased and the settling time also decrease. Okay, so each of the controller has its own effect. Okay.
Okay, so that's it for today's lecture. So on Wednesday, we will see how we can do tuning on PID controller. There are two types of tuning. We will see how we can do tuning with PID controller. And um, you can also now start trying do project part six, okay, regarding PID controller. So basically in that uh, part, you just tune the PID controller gains using MATLAB and see what you get from your graph, okay? So you don't need to do manual calculation compared to uh, part one of your project, okay? So part two of your project should be easy. Just play around with MATLAB. Okay, so any question before we end this lecture? <coughs> so if you have no question, then I'll see you again on Wednesday, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum and goodbye. Thank you, sir. Yeah.